Jā, zinat, šajā nedēļā man gadījās apmanoties you know, ar vārgāķiem. You know, this week no, I was uh, talking cilvēkiem. to several people from Bet, our church. Kādā sarunā, kad es runāju? In one conversation, cienu, when I was talking gados, to the lady in... Uh, a very quite old age and um, she, she was asking for this heat wave to go away. Were you praying for the heat wave to go away? Oh yeah, I see one, two, three hands where there are two or three we can do anything against it. So if it's just two, but so I was talking to this lady at a very, very such an age, and I was saying, let this heat wave go away. But she was saying, I am not of those. This is my time. Mm, I was thinking, what does it mean? People are saying, I cannot sleep, it's too hot. But somebody is saying, uh, maybe the Spanish heart or something. So basically, a new month has started July, and there are people who were born in July. Anyone born in July among us? Usually those are sunbathed, uh, very sunburned, and um, I see one, two, three, four, five. Seven. I know how to count till ten. Nine. Okay, ten. So if I made a mistake, you would laugh on me. But there are some people among us. And congratulations. And I received a scripture for you from Psalm 23, verse 4 and 5. But I believe that this psalm uh, has to be become uh, has to become your prayer, and I will remind and uh, remind what's written there. So Psalm 23 is the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yep, so I walk through the valley, on the, uh, valley of the shadow of death. So this is verse 4 and 5. Though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will not I will fear no evil, because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. What is God doing? He is preparing a table. You prepare a table before me. Not that you look from above what I'm going to eat, but God is taking care for your tomorrow. This is how King David saw it. In some other place, he is saying, God is the one who lifts me up and makes strong. So you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. What's going to happen with us? Goodness and mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Forever, whatever happens in the world, always in Latvia somebody will be the one who has enough food. Why not you? is the one who has enough of the food. So if the Lord is your shepherd. So congratulations to you. And please take this uh, Psalm 23, verse 4, 5. This is special. So even if uh, you, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. I believe that God will and can and wants to guide you through all this. In the name of Lord Jesus, I bless you for this next year. It's going to be a year of growth and increase. It's uh, definitely not going to be the year when you become less. This is going to be a year of faith and courage. This is going to be a year of increased vision. You, scale. you will scale up in the name of Lord Jesus. 
and he's the least to vaira party and got to obus vaira you better take this mother even though you get older you will do more some of it didn't work well, but uh, you will yes, do ma. more you will be able to do more amen in jesus name amen no shodien so today the scripture I would like to start with is the fourth popular scripture from all the scriptures which are in the Bible and which are popular. And I researched a little bit, if I'm not wrong, in 2019, maybe I mix up something, but uh, I checked uh, which uh, scriptures were the most popular in which year. If I remember correctly, in 2019, it's not in Latvia, it's most possibly the US, the most popular scripture, what do you think, which was? Yes, yeah, you're right, like you think. Which one? It was uh, Joshua 1.9. Didn't I tell you, be strong and courageous, don't be afraid. The Lord is going to be with you. People were sending it to each other and sharing and doing everything with this scripture. So it was in 2019 in the US. But we are not talking about the US, um, we are talking about Latvia, of course. So in order to um, get, give you the opinion of the most popular scriptures, I also invited an expert, expert. I have a pastor, Vilnis, uh, who is ministering for quite a long time, and I ask him which is the most popular scripture. You may disagree, you can have another opinion, but the pastor Vilnis said that the most popular uh, passage of scripture or, or quote from the Bible is which one? What do you think? In all years, not only one year, all the time. Which is the most popular? What do you think? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. The most popular uh, quote is what uh, is uh, called uh, like um, uh, Lord's Prayer in Latgale. So Jesus' prayer is the most popular. It is known by everyone. Even those who have never read the Bible, they know that um, prayer, our Father in Heaven. Which is the second? Yes, good, precise. You know very well. Which one is it? In funerals, it is you are taken from uh, this earth and you become. Now, the second most popular is uh, the Christmas story. Glory to God, peace on earth. And this is sung by everyone. Everybody knows, everybody remembers. Uh, during Christmas, uh, each uh, artist is, every artist is singing a song about this. This is number two. So which is number three? Do you agree with me so far? Who disagrees? Winnet wanted to raise, but then she was like, mm, no, 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 better no. Okay. Number three is John 3.16. People know it a uh, lot, so for so much the God, God loves the world. Maybe they don't know what comes next, but uh, they use it like LGBT use it, and, and everybody wants to say that uh, I'm such a good person, I'm loved, he loves, uh, God must be loved, he loves me. So God is loved. Um, this is known by most people. And this next uh, scripture, uh, number four. You are not reading the Bible? You look like that you don't know what I'm talking about. Romans 1.16? Mm, maybe. I think that uh, the most popular scripture number four is that on the night when the Lord was betrayed, he uh, took the bread and uh, broke, uh, gave to disciples. But we will read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and which is uh, the most popular scripture number five, Okay, let's skip number five, which is the uh, most popular number six. I believe that um, number five is Joshua 1.9, be strong. And, um, 
a Nike, for example, oh, just do it. it. Uh, where did they take it from? From the Bible, of course. In the Bible it's written how David is saying to his son, be strong and do it. Just do it. Trust the Lord, do it. And I would like to put in your soul today the fifth most popular scripture in the Bible. So this, this says, if you trust the Lord, He is with you and He will, will be with you. If He entrusts you to do something, do it. You never know how it would work. But His system for us, like in Isaiah 55, it's written that His thoughts are much higher and our thoughts are lower. We are thinking, how, it, how does it work? Um, God is saying it simply works. And for you, just do it and you would succeed. So now we are in 1 Corinthians um, chapter 11. We will start with verse 23. Don't um, fall asleep with me. So, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. But the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said, take it, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remember remembrance of me. In the same manner he also took the cup after the supper saying, the cup is new covenant in my blood. This do as often you drink it in, re in remembrance of me. For as of often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you are proclaimed the Lord's death till he comes. We continue reading. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. And let's stop here. Amen. So what is the Holy Communion? Uh, sometimes we associate with the uh, church ritual. You have to drink some bread and drink, uh, eat some little bread and drink from this little cup. But if we look at the Lord Jesus, three and a half years he was together with his disciples. And like Paul writes to us, is at that night when he was betrayed. So next day his Via uh, Dolores starts. So at that night uh, his uh, ministry was at the highest point. He was teaching, he was doing what he was supposed to do. And before the moment he left them, before the moment they would be left alone for a short moment, he established the Holy Communion. In my understanding, my dear friends, I absolutely believe that a lot of books have been written about this, about the Holy Communion, about all the meaning, how historically it looks like, and what kind of parallels can be drawn to the Pascha uh, feast in the Old Testament. I don't want to tire you with long uh, contemplations, but it was um, the it was like a quintessence of all the mission of the Lord Jesus. We can see it here. And we understand he had not done it yet, but he had already decided that he would do it. And uh, he was betrayed afterwards and Gethsemane started where he was fighting this fight and gets to the decision that uh, if, father, if the father cannot do in, in other any other way that he would do it. But this uh, Holy Communion, for its, uh, the mission is to remind to us, and remember it's written that whoever this eats this bread or drinks it, this cup in an unworthy manner, manner. So you cannot have this frivolous manner that this is something not important. It is very important, and Jesus is saying how it's important that this bread is my body, which is uh, given for you. And when the disciples were eating this bread, they couldn't understand what he was uh, trying to tell. Because it had to symbolize the uh, Passa feast, uh, the lamb which was uh, slain uh, to also pour the blood on houses so that this uh, destroying force wouldn't touch them. But Jesus is now saying, this is my body and my blood. And um, this is a new covenant.
In other words, uh, we can see that here is uh, Jesus' uh, missions, uh, riches, and all the great uh, things he has done for us. And we will have a holy communion today, but look carefully what he is saying. Let the man examine himself. So he is very specifically telling us that this relationship with God is very personal. This is like the that our ushers uh, who are preparing the Holy Communion, we are blessing it, we are praying for it, but it cannot uh, enter your life, it will not touch and bless you if you do not take it, and if you don't go there, don't take it and don't eat it. Nobody, even God cannot do this, you have to do it by yourself, and this is very specifically, there is no, um, it's not like a parable or something, but it's very specifically says that salvation is a very specific God and you, like we spoke last Sunday. Let us, all of us, approach uh, the throne of grace to receive. So everyone has to approach uh, all the new from believers' family and unbelievers' family. If you are totally destroyed and a sinner or a person who has lived uh, quite a morally nice life, everyone has uh, to enter to the throne and uh, receive the salvation. It cannot happen in any other way. The king cannot do this. Uh, the archbishop cannot do this uh, for the sake of the nation or city. This is individual. And it cannot be get, get gotten in any other way. But here we can see the principle that uh, in the Bible and for God it is very important what you are doing. But also uh, it is very important why you are doing this. Your motivation why you are enjoying it. He is saying that check and examine your motivation and then enjoy it. I believe that the Holy Communion is not just uh, eating this uh, bread and drinking this cup. There is some kind of touch. This is when you are anointed with oil. And, but I believe that it is even stronger, more comprehensive, more inclusive. So each of your problem is already programmed and uh, included in this uh, little bite of uh, communion's bread and also this little cup. And you can accept it, but it doesn't come automatically. It doesn't come just uh, for the sake that you did it. It's very important what is your attitude in your heart. Why are you doing this? Why are we doing this? A man can do a lot if they want and if they motivate themselves in the right way. If they understand why, why they are doing this. We already know, know about uh, the horse Daisy that got a doctoral degree about their um, earnings in the area of transport. So remember last Sunday's uh, sermon. So this person was uh, so respecting their horse. And we can see it uh, all around in this Western society. This is widespread that people are ready to get up three times a day, whether it's rain or snow or war or revolution, people are ready to go out to stand next to their little animal that are having their physiological needs. And for us it seems absolutely normal. Uh, that, yeah, this is an animal and, uh, and a human has to take care of them. And we today, we see that people uh, are having uh, higher and higher standards for children. Children are very, very important. And for the sake of children, uh, everything is possible. A human can not accept work or destroy career. And we read about the cinema stars that have earned millions and millions who say we would stop. Uh, uh, having uh, this uh, earning money because we are going to have a child and people uh, give sacrifices and do uh, something for children and for animals. They don't go on business trips or traveling, don't use their vacations because of their animals and children.
nu par vecākiem, tā kā mazliet mazāk. About uh, parents Vecāk, and elderly, un, uh, they are becoming un, old tā savāda, and uh, then it's different. Bet tomēr, miļādā, but, uh, uh, but still, padomā, my dear friends, I would like you to think about it a little bit. I am not talking about all the public. There are, there are still people who have these biblical values and understanding, but there are people who, for whom the values are transformed. We read, for example, about Jesus' time, and in Jesus' time, uh, there is something Jesus said, when you say korban, then uh, people uh, do an offering to God and don't uh, care for their parents. So God's uh, figure at that time uh, seemed to be so, so important. Uh, he had to be the primary. He had to be over everything. Jesus in some place said, if you love your father or mother more than me, I don't know whether anyone has uh, ever said that I love my child more than Jesus, I love my husband more than Jesus, I love my family, I love my work, I love my animal, my little doggy. Love, I love them more than Jesus. I don't believe that there is anyone who would say it honestly. But if Jesus had a birthday, and uh, Jesus would receive from them only such a, a small heart in WhatsApp or something very simple, they wouldn't raise up and wouldn't change clothing to go somewhere. But if their little doggy needed something, if uh, they had um, some problems with stomach or something, um, whatever rain or snow or whatever, they would go out and go to the doctor and pay a lot of money, buy vitamins. Even if they didn't have money for the electricity bill, they would buy vitamins for their little doggy. Because this is important. And here, I would like to say that this is the system of our values, our motivation, which uh, gives and assigns a value for each thing, even if we don't say it honestly. Isn't it so? And today we have a... Um, uh, a little conversation I would like to honestly speak to us among our church members and uh, ask you to examine yourself. This is not like any other service where you could uh, turn to others and say that this is for you, this is for you. Did you notice this about uh, giving offerings? That was about you. But today is devoted for you looking into your heart so that it doesn't happen to you because very often we don't see what processes are happening with us. Because we know what is happening in our country, what the Prime Minister is doing wrongly, but I don't know what's happening with me. I feel like that I am such a um, foundation of righteousness and so on, but maybe you don't see the situation in the right way. So today we are looking into our hearts. So personally. And isn't it so that for uh, some other things you are more prepared to go, to raise and to, to leave something, to do something, maybe in, for the sake of work. Maybe this is a career, maybe this is your animal, maybe those are your children or your spouse, maybe your friend or the company, uh, whatever it is. Maybe this is sports, or your figure, your body, maybe this is your youth. Your youth is uh, sneaking away and you need to stop it and, and, and keep it and back, get back. I don't know, but I understand the biblical concept is that uh, Jesus is the most valuable and for his sake we are the most prepared to go somewhere and do something. The motivation. A person is uh, ready and prepared for a lot if they have the right motivation. And here I would like to say that uh, we are kind of uh, interesting. And I will tell an illustration. My granddaughter told a funny story, and I had heard several versions of it, and I will tell one of them. So Mr. Brown and Mrs. Brown had two sons, and they were a very courageous family, and uh, they were acting how they understood, and they called their sons 
uh, in very interesting names. Uh, the, the first was called, uh, um, who cares? And for the second son, it was called uh, Trouble. And one day, uh, this Trouble, together with uh, the first son, um, what does it have to do with you, or who cares? And they were playing uh, the hide and seek, and um, they, the first son didn't see the trouble, and they were started looking for the trouble, looking for and looking, uh, don't see, looking under the car uh, or somewhere else, and that was uh, suspicious for the police, and the police went to this guy and asked. Um, and he was asked, what's your name? Uh, the policeman asked to this guy, uh, <laughs> the, the policeman was asking to this guy, so what are you doing here? And he said, it's not your business. And then he was, the uh, policeman was, uh, are you looking for trouble? And the guy was answering, yeah, please show me where he, where he is. So it happens that uh, with your attitude, with your values, you kind of uh, are uh, uh, giving some titles, some names to things. You are giving uh, names to your children. And sometimes you see that uh, parents call their children victors, but um, treat him like uh, his name was loser. And uh, many other uh, contradictions we can see. And also Jesus is saying, you are calling me Lord, Lord, you are calling me Lord. But uh, you are behaving like the, you are the Lord's. For example, we know that Moses, in uh, one place, uh, built an altar and called it uh, the Lord my banner. And think about it. You couldn't uh, meet Moses uh, without uh, knowing about his Lord, because the banner is something that you notice before you get to know a person. You see the banner. And Moses is saying, the Lord is my banner. Gideon is saying, the Lord is peace. And we can also find how Abraham is saying, the Lord uh, who chooses, and many other situations. And I want to say that also you, you have called your God, uh, maybe not literally, but with your attitude, you have a specific name for the Lord. How you react to his orders, to what he is saying, to his uh, teaching. You have given a certain name to him. And today I would like to speak about, I said, um, um, basically I don't want to, uh, but uh, I felt that the Holy Spirit wanted to speak about it, because uh, this is something that uh, that sometimes is a time when you need to say maybe not so pleasant things, maybe some uh, very refreshing things. So um, maybe somebody has called God, God who doesn't hear, God who doesn't answer, God who doesn't see. And um, this person is not expecting anything from God. Maybe they are sometimes praying, but not expecting anything. And especially I would like to draw attention to people who call God uh, yesterday's God, my yesterday's God. And what does it mean? Yesterday's God. This we can read in Revelations. And uh, this is uh, chapter 3, and um, this is uh, Laodicea Church, and, and Jesus says, write to the angel of this church and say, so I'm reading verse 15, I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot, I could wish you were cold or hot, so then because you are lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Also, from this short scripture, we can understand that this is a very, very dangerous position to be lukewarm. But uh, this is a person, and those are people. If we speak about a specific situation, is um, 
And, and for today, your task is to look into yourself. Isn't the villains talking about you? So this is a person who used to know God, who had a real relationship, hot and burning relationship with God. Where maybe they were ministering to God. Maybe there were a pastor or, 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 or somebody else. I have met ex-pastors, yesterday's pastors, and I must say that usually uh, their position is uh, very, very bad. I can totally agree to the scripture that uh, it has to be a situation that you are taking care of this person. Don't you understand where you are going? You have become lukewarm, and if you don't return, if you don't repent, you would lose your salvation. And in both scriptures where the Bible speaks about losing the salvation, one scripture is when the Bible speaks about a person who has enjoyed gifts of the Holy Spirit, the person who knows blood, the blood of Jesus, this is not a new believer, somebody who is doubting and doesn't know and maybe don't understand something in the beginning and all these doctrines for example are very confusing and they are saying some wrong uh, ideas no 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 here the story in this uh, ver first uh, uh, situation the story is about somebody who was uh, uh, with the Lord they understand what they are talking about this is like uh, like with Judas Judas is a uh, crime once I was talking to one man who was saying what was uh, what did Jesus do? He just simply, maybe he misunderstood the situation. But in the Bible, the principle is, if you are given more, right? right? If you are given more, you are also asked more, you are expected more. They require more. The more revelation we receive from God, the more responsibility we carry in front of God. And, and sometimes God uh, doesn't uh, reveal to us uh, some things, just knowing that our love is uh, like morning dawn. Uh, it's like left or right, we are kind of uh, doubting and uh, like you blow of wind. And that's why God doesn't reveal things to us. But the more is uh, revealed to you and to Judas a lot was revealed so therefore his betrayal was huge and the same about the Holy Communion. For the person who gets to it, they have to know that in this is included quintessence of all Christ's work, all these depths, and therefore you have to be very, very uh, cautious and have a reverence and also respect and faith towards it. So you have become lukewarm. Yesterday you were on fire, you were sacrificing, you were walking in reverence, you were ready and prepared to minister, you were um, judging and you were um, controlling your mouth and you were trying to bless your enemies and bless those who are doing something against you. But now something has changed, you are not like that. You are yesterday's uh, Christian on fire. Maybe today you are still in church, but you are not like that anymore. And that means that you are on a very dangerous path. And in Hebrews uh, 12, he is explaining what has happened to this person. So Hebrews 12:15, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this and by this many become defiled. Pay attention. A root of bitterness is already in the heart of this person. But this is uh, becoming bigger and bigger, and many are defiled with that, so that uh, they are not defiled. So how can one pastor become bitter? Easily. How can a minister uh, become bitter? Easily. Uh, or a child of God, passionate child of God that wants to change the world, be a blessing. How can they become bitter? That happens. How does it happen? People get disappointed. 
Jesus in his ministry, he was perfect, but he was also facing rejection, uh, suspicions, betrayal. He also was uh, facing with uh, very many negative reactions by people and also attitudes. But uh, Jesus uh, didn't get disappointed. Vilnius, um, have you ever felt uh, kind of uh, uh, insulted, um, disappointed? Yes. And you, you kind of um, have um, a Christian next to you who is saying, hey, hey, something wrong. My wife very often was throwing me out of this. And, and she's like, Vilnius, what is going on? This is not about you. And you have to take uh, control and, and make an effort to get out of this disappointment that uh, people didn't uh, understand you, people didn't see the sacrifice you have put into this, uh, they didn't appreciate, uh, something didn't happen like you expected, it didn't happen when you expected it, and it didn't happen like it was written in the Bible, and it didn't happen in your life, and you step a step back, and you are very cautious, you are very critical, you are looking around. And if um, before some time you saw the Church of God, you, you saw uh, and thought that everyone was angel, but now you see a problem in everyone. And you are here not uh, only uh, not to serve uh, the Lord, but you are here for a different uh, goal, for your own goals. And it cannot be seen from a side. Just a very simple example. We just had COVID-19. And also we were here praying and standing against it. And uh, I also heard um, a person in the US, the pastor, who, popular pastor, who was uh, standing on the stage and cursing the virus. And he said, that's done. That's done. And people were saying, but pastor, uh, we stood against COVID-19, but see the numbers are growing, growing, growing. And one year passed and two years passed and somebody got disappointed and they were saying, uh, what happened? The pastor was wrong or it didn't work? And people allowed uh, this bitterness into their hearts. You know, this is paradoxical, but all this has end ended and um, all this um, vaccines uh, story has ended, but I see that people still have pain in their soul. And this is like in this anecdote that uh, you found something, but uh, you still have this bitterness. There is a story that one family went to another family, and then uh, uh, when they left, uh, the hosts couldn't find their uh, silverware, and uh, they write a message to those uh, people and uh, say that, uh, since you left, we cannot find your silverware. And those are writing back and saying, what do you think we are? We are children of God. And even we, if we were not children, of God, we wouldn't do it. And after some time, they are saying, did you find this silverware? And they said, yeah, yeah, we found. The wife had uh, put them somewhere. Yeah, we found the silverware, but this bitterness is still in our heart. And this is what uh, the devil is doing. So there are some misunderstandings and um, and this is uh, very, very um, often used by the devil. So what could we have done? How we should have acted? But first we understand that we can act like Jesus. Jesus is a perfect theology. In the Bible it's black and white written and we don't see anywhere that uh, Jesus uh, went to the mountain and stood against illness or um, other illness and went uh, to the mountain and, and this uh, kind of curse. And so this is not that we can get uh, to the um, spire of the Peter's, St. Peter's Church and uh, 
to stand against uh, COVID and that stops. Jesus uh, said that uh, in the last days there would be illnesses and also wars. And we were praying against war in Ukraine and uh, and, and one, one person came to me and also said that, uh, that we were praying against war in Ukraine, they are praying and nothing happens. But haven't you read the Bible that it's written that in the last days uh, there would be wars? And if I stood here on the stage and said that I'm standing against the war in Jesus' name, would it um, cross out Jesus' words? Uh, if it was uh, so easy, it would be... Um, uh, it could happen that Jesus' prophecy about the last times uh, is not fulfilled, because as soon as something starts, we, st uh, put the, we come on the stage and, and we say, I rebuke uh, COVID-19, 20, 21 or something, or famine or, or wars, and Jesus' prophecy wouldn't be fulfilled. But um, what do we see here? Uh, we see that understanding of a mature Christian. As soon as I come here on the stage or League or Davids, um, any other ministers uh, who say that we stand against COVID-19, we don't accept it, we, in, in, we curse it in the name of Jesus. And first of all, I have authority over what? Over my own life. And you can join me. You can take it also over your life. That in uh, the name of Jesus, we would not, not get ill, we will not allow to have it, we will not be disappointed, we will not have, um, uh, do this. And the same about the war. We cannot stop all these evil things in the world, but we can um, not allow this war to enter our soul. I can uh, make sure that God is guiding me, that in my life I am also prepared if this war starts in Europe, that you and me, we wouldn't be afraid. And Jesus' words are that if you see the war and uh, the plague and so on, do not get scared. It's not going to touch us. Yes, it's touching. Christians are um, bombed and, and shelled and, and people die. But um, the story is that, yeah, you can be in this droning ship, but uh, in the next moment you are with your Lord, and your biggest riches uh, didn't uh, stay in your summer house or your bank account. Your biggest riches and uh, your wage is over there, and you are not losing anything. And then you are not afraid. But sometimes it is like that uh, people step on this path of bitterness or uh, falling back, backsliding. And in my life, uh, I have seen several cases when I had specifically to talk to people and say, my dear friend, what you are doing, I don't know whether you know or not, but this is wrong. It cannot continue like that. You are not only harming yourself, but you are also harming people who are around you with your talking. This uh, Christian, former Christian, knows everything but doesn't believe in anything. They are so toxic and poisonous to new Christians that can uh, tell them so many things and turn things as they want and also justify with the word of God. And they can do a uh, big harm to this new Christian. And here is what we read in uh, Revelation chapter 2 where he is saying, uh, tell to the church of Thyatira um, that uh, this uh, woman, uh, Jezebel, Stop. And the emphasis is not uh, on the emphasis on the women. women. If we read Gospels, we see that women, especially women, had never betrayed the Lord Jesus. They had never left them. Uh, they were never, never fleeing from him. They were standing uh, in front of the cross and they were the first ones who went to the, uh, this grave. Women were the most uh, trustworthy. The Bible is never discredited. Woman, uh, that she is a woman, uh, vice versa, this blessed mission to um, give a part of their life and, uh, and health for a child, God has entrusted to women and uh, we have to be grateful for to women and we have to show gratitude and respect to our mothers and women who are next to us.
Tas, ka tu esi kāda sieviete, tevi iznēsāja. Un atdēļu daļu savas vesuļas. Atdēļu daļu savas dzīvības. Un 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 tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palīdzi savas dzīvības, tas ir kaut ko pavisam cits. Un ja tu palī
how much he owned uh, only the grave of his wife. This uh, promised land uh, was uh, associated with the death of his uh, spouse. So each uh, minister has an opportunity to do, get disappointed uh, and say to God, God, should I do? Uh, it looks like that you are too slow. You, you kind of don't answer. You don't act. But all these heroes of faith, they didn't become bitter, remained in the ministry. And also it said that Jesus Christ yesterday, today and tomorrow the same. I trusted him yesterday, I trusted him. And, and like that I will walk to, to the end. Yeah. I would like also to give you one more scripture. It spoke to me, and uh, this is Ephesians uh, 4, 17, 18. I write it down. And it is saying that there are things you could uh, not do anymore. When we accept Jesus as our Lord, we uh, burn uh, these old uh, bridges. You cannot live like you used to live. You cannot think like you used to think. You cannot use your old arguments. You know what's that, what's what, and uh, you have a Savior, uh, and you have given uh, your life to Him. And if you take it back, you will not uh, give it back to Him again once more. And he is saying, don't live like these Gentiles are living. You know, you understand, use it, stay in it, remain in it. Ephesians chapter 1, he is uh, finalizing, saying that you have enlightened eyes of uh, the Spirit and live in it. And you understand this is not only Sunday when you are so holy or the small group, like Liga said, that you use this word of faith. But um, you say that Lord is mine and you you live according to it. But if you live on just an ordinary life, it doesn't work. It's, uh, you cannot get uh, sweet and bitter from one well. You are either a believer or the one who doubts. You either receive from God or not. You serve God or you serve yourself. Whom are you serving? In a moment, you will have Holy Communion. Jesus said, in Luke he is saying, I have always wanted to have this Holy Communion with you. And I believe that, um, and, and that was um, the third time they, they were having this Communion, but uh, here it is the final one where it said, this is my body, I have given it for you. I gave it for you. And in the next days, they saw him dying, uh, mocked and humiliated. And you and me, we haven't been on this cross. But he did it uh, for you and me not to be there. And then he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood for you and me. If Jesus is uh, your Lord, if you serve him, if you... Um, don't agree to become lukewarm, uh, to become a non-interested Christian. If you don't manipulate these people, you serve people, you love people, you don't have your own goal, you have his goals and his intentions. And then, in this case, God is in your side. And then you can speak uh, Psalm 23 ab about your tomorrow. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is your shepherd. The Lord helps you. He um, prepares a table for you. Even if you are in a shadow of death, uh, you are not afraid because you are serving your God. And today, my brother and sister, I would like you to look into your heart. Look into your heart, whether this um, Christ's face is not uh, shadowed. Let him shine. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. You should say like that. You are my greatest riches, my greatest career. You are my future. You are my security and safety. And I'm happy with you, Jesus. Whatever happens in the world, I am grateful. You are my yesterday's God. You are my today's God. You are my tomorrow's God. God. I'm going to stay and I'm going to remain uh, trustworthy for, to you, whatever happens, I'm trusting you.